Hello, hello, hello. Give me one second here. I think and I hope that we are good to go here. My mic is on. That's usually a good first start. And uh, everything seems to be good. All right. Uh, let me check one more thing here. All right. I think we're good. So uh, good to see everybody again. And uh, this is the decaf version of Coffee with the Cowbell. Difficulties there. I am your host, Ricardo Wilkins, your resident teams geek, here to uh, chat it up with you once again. Glad you could join. And uh, I hope you got your coffee, your decaf coffee, and just hang out. I'm going to do my best to monitor chat, but I make no promises because the 700 window is open. <laughs> in front of me right now <laughs> oh boy so with that said um we're kind of in a series right now or at least um, i'm calling this part two of the conversation of guest collaboration and teams um so last week we kind of started that that combo and i i think i spent most of that time trying to define and, and get on the same page in terms of uh, <clears throat> what a guest is. We talked about lowercase g and capital G. I hope that was helpful. Maybe not. Um, it, it, it's probably more relevant to your admins, those folks who are uh, going behind the scenes and creating um, the, you know, going into Azure AD and uh, you know, managing users, they certainly or hopefully have a good understanding of of a guest, capital G, lowercase g. Um, it definitely means something specific to the admin in terms of the Azure AD account. That's an end user, though. Um, it does mean, you know, bringing somebody into your team, a named authenticated person that you then are able to collaborate with almost exactly like you would with someone in your org um, so um, that, that was one of the things we want to talk about or continue to talk about today now let me, let me switch um, let me go switch over to here and I will do, 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 do. I will bring in, all right so I think we're good um, so one of the things that come with that capital G guest membership is that you are inviting someone to your team as a guest, right? And uh, if I'm here among my teams and um, let's say I wanted to invite someone and I think I'm an owner. Let, let, let's check and see. Manage team. I'm not an owner of this one. I that doesn't mean I can't invite guests, but uh, just for the sake of this, I'm going to go to one that I know I'm an owner of, which would be this one. And uh, and so let me try to make this a little easier to see. So I'm in the delete me one here. And I'm going to, um, oops, hit the wrong button there. Um, so I'm going to um, add a member here. And so that that uh, that might be a little confusing. Adding a member, they're not they're 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 going to be a guest member. So uh, it doesn't really kind of specify that there, but. Kind of stay with me. So 
I'm going to add a member and uh, and in fact it even says here you can also add people outside your organization as guests by typing their email addresses. So that means anyone at on the planet, I mean anybody on the planet dot com, you know, so anyone with an email address, you can see that Teams is ready to try to add that person as a guest to the team. So that's on the planet, that's Gmail, that's, you know, any, oops, any email address that you think it can't work with, it, it probably can. All right. So it's ready. It will try to add them as a guest. And once I've done this part, and that's very similar to if I'm adding a um, someone in my org, right, where it actually comes up. Um, but in this case, it you know it knows when it's a guest or not, right? So let's say I do that. I'm gonna just cancel out of that. I've sent the invitation, and that is not an automatic. What is automatic, and I and you can see I have a guest here. So this is uh, my other alter ego, Surface Pro, the Surface Pro Bro. If you go to surfacepro.bro.com, that's where I talk. That's where I geek out on Surface devices. That. Um, if you didn't know, I'm, I, I love them. <laughs> I've had them since version one. I got many of them. You may have seen some videos I've done on the Surface Duo, all that good stuff. Anyway, that's what that is. So I invited surfacepro.bro at gmail.com to this team, and, and clearly it was successful. I am in here, or he is in here as a member, uh, a guest member of the team. So this is the listing of members and guests, and it shows me what their role is here. Um, someone inside my org would show as member okay so it, it worked at some point and so what would what did it look like for a surface pro bro when he got his invite and what did it what will it look like um, if I was to be invited to something so let's go to my email I do have one here um, so you can see here this is someone in some other org inviting me into their team. You've been added as a guest to, in this case, Contoso. Um, Bob, in this case, this is Bob Wiley over in the Contoso org. Um, um, that's the author of Death Therapy, if you didn't know. That's a, that's a whole other story. I won't get into that. But anyway, Bob added, added me as a guest to this uh, nicely named team, Invite Test 1. And uh, actually, I'm going to go ahead and see what this does. Now, the reason I say it that way, I may have already um, been added to this tenant, so I may get a, a smoother experience than if I was fresh and brand new. But let's just see what happens. So I'm going to open in Microsoft Teams. It's going to open in the, it's going to try it in the browser first. All right, so this is good. Um, I think this is telling me that. Uh, I'm not a part of that org yet. Okay, so this is me. And it's saying review permissions. In fact, do I need to make this bigger? Let's see. Yeah, we could do that. All right, so that's me um, and my tenant. Review permissions. It's telling me about the Contoso tenant that I'm about to accept an invitation to. This happens to be a gov tenant. Um, and... Uh, it's telling me that org. this might seem scary if you're like if you've never done this before I mean it's a lot of a lot of like fine print here but essentially it's saying um, I'm gonna be able to authenticate into this org. Um, the people in that team are gonna be able to see my name and my email address and, and maybe even a photo my profile photo um, you should only accept it if you trust Contoso. By accepting, you allow this organization to access and process your data to create, control, and administer your account according to their policies. Contoso has not, a pro not provided a link to their privacy statement for you to review. Contoso may log information about your access. You can remove these permissions at my apps, blah, blah, blah. And I can cancel or accept. If I cancel, I'm not going to you know, be able to be a guest access, but if I accept, that'll keep going. But I'm going to pause here because, uh, again, if this if this seems scary, 
you know, just because of all the, the legal sounding words. I mean, I, I would just point out a few things and I'll really start at the bottom. The first thing is that you can remove these permissions at myapps.microsoft.com. Uh, whether you are in one uh, external org or a dozen like I am, there is a spot, myapps.microsoft.com, where you can go and see all the orgs that you have um, that you've been invited to, that you're a part of. And at any time, you can go there and go to that app and say, I think it's either remove or leave. I think it's leave the org. OK, if for some reason you're, you're no longer comfortable or, you know, with, with being a guest in that org, just because you've been invited doesn't mean you have to be a part of that org forever. You, you can leave it in your, uh, you know, your, your, you'll, you would be pulled out of that directory, per se. Um, so that's a, a first a good part to uh, consider at first is that first part. And then um, to me, these other parts, I mean, you could talk to your, you know, whoever does compliance and whatever for you about their opinion. That's more important than mine in this case. But uh, to me, this is just saying, you know, um, you're getting into somebody else's system uh, that they own it. You don't. They can't control what you know what's going on there i mean if you're not comfortable with being in someone else's house and, and playing by their rules then this is sending you should not <laughs> accept my invite to the party if you're not okay with me you know with this being my house that's kind of how i how i'll read that so um the other and the last thing i would say that's important about this little this this box and and this experience here is uh, this is a necessary step to, to move forward. So uh, if someone says, I invited you to my team, that's not that doesn't mean we are all, all ready to go right now for collaborating. I do have to get through this step. I've got to accept the invitation. OK, and so uh, I've seen that happen often. Uh, I don't know why I don't have access. They said they invited me. You know, I'm, I guess I'm just expecting to open my teams and see the team there ready to go and without me going and checking my email to, to get that invite. Uh, or it can can uh, there is a, a way an or it could add you in a more seamless fashion. It just means a little work for the admins. But that's probably the only way you're going to kind of get in a team with zero effort on your part. Right. Your typical scenario is um, is going to require you to accept the invitation essentially and this this experience looks a little different depending on where you're coming from i think this would look a little different if you were say and and one day i'll maybe i'll demo that maybe in the next session you know if you're a gmail user that has never logged into a team's uh session or or been a part of a microsoft teams team you're going to go through a couple more steps if you you know you've never been in someone else's org it's got to do some some authentication stuff so um but this one i think is a relatively painless one because i'm already in office 65 user and so forth and so on okay um so i'm going to go ahead and accept and you can see it's doing some things all right so it's thinking about it and whatnot <clears throat> and so now it's ready um, in this case I could certainly I could add I could open it in the browser I'll go ahead and let it open in my desktop app and we'll see what happens I think it should come up in a bit it wouldn't be in hidden teams I don't think I'm trying to remember what just happened here yeah I was uh, yeah I accepted an invite so let me um, click off of here and come back. I'm waiting for it to appear. It may take some time here. While we're maybe waiting for that to, to uh, load, let me go to Bob's tenant and kind of show you what he sees. So um, let's make sure where am I? Okay. Um, and hopefully you can kind of see this, make this a little bigger, make this a little 
bigger as well. There is uh so this is this is Bob here. All right, Bob Wiley. And he he sent the invite. There's my test one um team. And if I go to manage team, I will see um there's there is that's me that we were just looking at. That's the guest. You can see the team's ads, and I don't even think you can get around this, the, the guest in parentheses so that it's very clear to anybody when they're interacting with a guest. Okay. Uh, so from Bob's perspective, the work is done. He's just waiting on R. Wilkins to kind of come in. All right. Uh, let's go back here and see. Um, let me close and reopen. Da, 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 da. Let's bring this back. Um, of course, with a demo, things don't work the way you want them to. Let me check the web and see what's up. see okay so the web is is my desktop is slow to the party my desktop client the web is is there oh I know what it was actually so anyway here we here we see you're joining t teams as a guest welcome as a guest you can work and chat with others and navigate across topics files and more more through channels you can chat one-to-one -one and with groups and connect through online meetings so you are ready so let's go now there I am in invite test one and I now realize why I didn't see it over here so I'm gonna go back I should not have expected to see it here what I'm looking at right now is my org you know my uh, uh, the, the, the teams that I'm a part of in my org what I've been, what has happened, I've been invited to another tenant, and I think I may have mentioned this before, but we're going to see that by way of, um, you know, our, our tenants here. And I'm going to just go ahead and do a check for updates, make sure this guy is actually working right. But um, you can see here in the web, which is caught up, is, you know, keeping up way better in the desktop app in this case. Uh, I am part of Contoso. Now, the, the the two orgs in this case happen to both be, be called Contoso, but uh, you know, imagine this was a different name. But it's telling me that I'm a part of two orgs now: Contoso, my company, and then Contoso Number Two, and that one I'm in as a guest. And pretty much every every other org I get invited to that fills up this list, I'll be a guest in. Um, and as you can see from the blue line right now, I am in the guest tent and I can click that and make this switch that takes a few seconds. And that's what people usually complain about. And now I'm switching to my home org. Takes many seconds. And this should uh, look to you just like what we were seeing in the desktop app, right? Um, so now I'm in my home org uh, versus the guest org. And you can actually see, I think that indicator is trying to tell me something's going on. Actually, that's the accept invite is what, is what it's saying there, which uh, is interesting. So I'm clicking it. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think I think these things are having a little trouble keeping up because I've already accepted that invite. And obviously, I'm I'm in. I made the switch to this org, right? Um, I can go to manage team, not because I'm able to manage this, but more about seeing some of the things here. And I just wanted to see the uh, membership there. Obviously, I'm in a one channel. I'm not in any other teams. We can see clearly that. Uh, there are other teams uh, that you know Ricardo has access to. I'm not a part of them. Okay, and uh, there we go. I'm going to 
sign out. For those that don't know, if you ever have some wonky stuff going on with your Teams desktop app, that's what I always do. Check for updates, let it do its thing. Sometimes it'll tell me, yep, I found some updates. Can you please click here to refresh? In this case, it didn't do it, but now my second step is usually to sign out and sign back in. To me, that usually fixes all things. We'll see if it does here or if it, or if it makes me a liar. All right, we're logging back into the desktop app. That looks the way it should. And come on, there. So in th in this case, my little my little trick worked to check for updates, sign out, sign sign back in, and now I'm seeing the same thing I was seeing in the web and all as well. See if I can switch to the uh, other tenant here. Thinks about it. When we start talking about shared channels, this this little pain here that you're probably thinking is taking too long. This is one of the reasons why the shared channel concept is cool. So just remember this moment so you'll appreciate later. Um, logging in. This is a little longer actually than usual. Um, I think it's the, the VM that I'm running and all that good stuff. Um, but we're in the desktop app here. We are now in the guest, uh, the guest area. So all is well, even with the clunkiness there. Okay. Um, so, so again, that's a, a little explanation on, let's say another company that I collaborate with, uh, invited me to, uh, their team. You know, Teams is happy to have me be a guest of, you know, m multiple organizations and I'm supposed to be able to see them and 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 switch between them with this with this uh, drop down list. OK. Uh, now that I'm in this one, a couple of things you may notice I've got as a guest, I don't get all the bells and whistles that the people in this org I uh, would get so my left rail looks a lot leaner, right? And I, I don't have all the fancy apps I had before. Um, you notice I don't have a create teams down here like I did before. I, I got managed. I can kind of, to some degree, look at the uh, teams that I'm a part of, but I can't create a new one. You're noticing the lack of a plus symbol up here um, for a new tab. All right, uh, I'd have to ask the owner of the team. Can you, you know, please make a tab for me? Things like that. I can, however, post. You know, so I'm gonna say, I'm in. All right, and uh, and I've got you know your typical things down on the bottom. Still not, may probably not a full list, um, like in my org, but I've got some stuff down here. Um, I think you will notice I can start up. You see, I've got a meet now. I can start up a meeting in this guest environment. So I can fire up a meeting, which is cool. What I can't do is schedule a channel meeting here. So just these little caveats, right? But but you know, most of the time when you bring a guest in, it's it's because you want to chat with them and you want to share files with them, and and not just share files like they are able to view them, but to actually edit and create and you know and co-author them. Notice I'm a guest in here, but I have the power to make a brand new document in this space. So even though I'm just a guest, I can fire up a brand new document, and you know, and get going there. Meanwhile, on the, on uh, Bob's side, if he goes in, you notice he sees uh, that Ricardo. Oops, what did I do here? Um, you can see that uh, he sees that Ricardo is uh, you know in there. I'll even go over here to files. You s I can see the doc that Ricardo made just a few seconds ago. I can get into that doc. You can see that he started typing. 
and I can see him in here in real time. Ricardo has this document open. Ricardo's cursor is right there. Um, I can, you know, do some work separately. And again, we are both in this document together. Okay, if I switch back to uh, this guy, you'll see that now I see Bob in there doing his thing and while I'm doing my thing. Just see that there. I can see up here that Bob is in the uh, in the document. So I'm a guest in the uh, tenant. Uh, whether I, you know, I, I don't even I don't even need a team's license or anything. I need I need internet and a browser, you know, at a minimum, and I can come in here and start to collaborate with this group. Okay. Um, so that's good stuff. But but this is the guest with <clears throat> guest with a capital G kind of experience, and I won't kind of I won't you know drain the ocean here with every new you know everything that the guests can and can't do here but hopefully you get the the picture that uh i can do a lot of things but i can't do everything um and then you will also notice though now this is the last time i'll say it and but this is the complaint for many that when i'm in this guest org i'm in this guest org and i'm out of my org so i can do guest org stuff but uh if i if you're trying to multitask between your org and the other org that's going to mean switching back to your org and waiting a few seconds to get back to the other org. On one hand, I like it because uh, I don't have to be confused. Am I, do, you know, about where I am as I, I make a very conscious decision decision to switch back. You can see there. Uh, so now I'm out of the guest org. I'm in my org. Now I can do my thing. Um, so yeah, if you think that that's too much, too many button clicks to move back and forth, then you will enjoy when we start talking about shared channels. The last thing I will say is, um, let me go back to Bob and uh, come over to chat. I'm a guest you know, in that tenant now, which means if, if Bob fires up a new chat, right? Cardo, actually, I think it's R. Wilkins. R. Wilkins, and uh, looks like I'm in here uh, from probably a previous demo years ago or something. But anyway, I can chat with uh, that guest as if they were uh, a member in the org. Okay. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, I may not be able to show it here just because I can't remember. Well, actually, let me do one thing. Do do do. Let me see. Uh, Nestor W. Okay. Uh, Nestor W. Last thing I'll show here. At uh, I'm trying to remember. Oh, it must. Uh, let's see. No, that's not right. Yeah, I'm getting I'm getting my my users confused. So uh, what I was going to show here, though, is with the right federation, uh, you uh, you can also chat with people outside of your org, even without them not being a guest capital G in your org. Uh, if the fed if your if your organization's federation settings are correct, so that's another way to collaborate with people outside your org, even without the uh, one might call it the lengthy um, federation uh, settings. I'm sorry, the uh, lengthy guest invite settings. Uh, you can still collaborate by uh, chatting with them. Okay, and I don't think I'm necessarily prepared to well to show that. Although it's kind of showing it here. This is another one of my domains. I'm so I'm in this uh, Contoso org chatting with someone in, in another org and you know it's labeled as external. So this is really uh, let me make it bigger. It's really what I was trying to point out here. Your ability to chat with federated orgs as if they you know they this person looks like they're in my org other than the fact that it's external. 
and, a, and probably some behaviors here like you can see down here very short list of uh, things you know going on down here um, and so forth and so on right so so down here I am chatting with someone in my org I got every bell and whistle known to man when I'm chatting with Ricardo that's outside of my org I do not have every bells and whistle because uh, it just doesn't work between the orgs all right um, I hope I knew that was gonna happen I hope that is useful um, or I hope it makes sense really uh, that invite process again is one if you don't take anything else away from this conversation the invite process is important because uh, I've just seen over and over people confuse why they can't get into a team uh, overwhelmingly the answer ended up being they did not check their email or they did not accept the invitation which as you saw involves accepting some terms per se so if not if you don't get anything else out of this remember that piece um, and then hopefully I have whet your appetite for our, sh our shared channels or Teams Connect conversation, which help, which intends to help with that tenant switching uh, piece that uh, you may find cumbersome. Okay. So I think that's all the time we got today. And uh, so I hope you enjoy the rest of your decaf coffee and have a good night. This has been Coffee with the Cowbell. See you later.